Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I recently got the Guerlain Meteorites perfume, which I believe is like a new version. They used to have a perfume based on the meteorites scent and this is a little bit different. Anyway, I didn't think it was enough to make a video just on this one perfume. I think that would be kind of boring. And a bunch of you actually have been asking me about what my uh, favorite perfumes are of lately or what my perfume collection is. So I thought I would just talk a little bit about my perfume collection and the ones that I like and, and why and uh, you know what do I wear for when and you know all that kind of stuff. I don't have a huge perfume collection and in fact I am only like just recently getting into or I should say getting back into perfumes. I had a stint maybe like in my early 20s where I was really into it and then I found one that I loved which I'll talk about and wore that probably for the last 15 years, just like straight. Just didn't, just kept repurchasing the bottle, repurchasing the bottle, never ever felt like I needed to uh, find a new one. Absolutely, I still absolutely love it. But I thought I would kind of branch out a little bit over the past couple of years. So I thought I would just share with you uh, some of my favorites and what I have in my collection. So if you're interested in uh, my perfume collection and a little bit more on this new Media Rights perfume, then just keep on watching. Guerlain uh, re-released basically this Media Rights perfume and as I understand it's a little bit different from their original or at least the edition that came out before this one, which I think was in uh, like a bigger bottle. Uh, and this is what the new bottle looks like. And here is the box that it came in. So really cute, really pretty. And as you guys know, if you've been watching my channel, um, I just recently kind of fell in love with the Guerlain Media Rights and that scent that used to bother me when I was younger, I just really love now. I just really love that violet scent. It, to me it's just, it's very pretty, it's very feminine, and it's very floral, but it doesn't, it's not overbearing, it's not overpowering, and I really like like lighter, kind of fresher scents. So I'd heard that, you know, Guerlain was coming out with this meteorites perfume, and I thought, oh great, let me get it, and then, you know, I had read on, I don't know, on a board or something I came across when I was searching for this, um, that this was different and it's not the same and it doesn't smell like the powder anymore. So there's a lot of uh, criticism on this uh, perfume. But when I saw it available on Nordstrom, I ordered it right away and I thought to myself, well, I don't have a point of reference. I never smelled the previous uh, iteration of this perfume and so I don't really know what I'm missing. So I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, I'll probably like this. It'll probably be fine. Um, so I just got home from traveling and I just opened up the box and when I opened up the actual box of this perfume, this actual box of it, I thought, oh my god, it smells like the violet. It smells like it smells great to me. And this perfume bottle is so pretty. I like the round thing. It kind of uh, mimics the like round meteorite pearls. I almost said balls. Pearls. <laughs> and this label on the bottle is actually like fabric which has been glued down, but it's fabric. So it just, it's really pretty and I like the attention to detail and the cap on here. I think this is like wood, but there's like a pearly finish to it. So it's just, it's very pretty. I think the color is right. So at first I just sprayed it kind of in the air. It's so interesting because again, if you come up close to the bottle, like if you just smell the little nozzle here, it smells like the meteorites. It smells like the violet. It smells very, very pretty, but as soon as you spritz it, I feel like it takes on a whole different personality. And I sprayed it onto the back of my hand. I have like fragrance lotion on, I even have a little bit of another perfume on, so I can't really, really tell for sure. But when I do spray it into the air, it all of a sudden smells a little bit more powdery and also a little bit more um, like there's a sharpness to it, where the violet scent to me is a very soft scent it all of a sudden smells very, very sharp. I don't know, I'm on the fence as to whether I even like it or not. I'm gonna give it some time because I think I need to get away from the idea that it's, you know, that it's gonna smell like the meteorites because I don't think it's going to, at least it's not going to exactly. I need to get beyond that and then I need to kind of assess it all on its own. It smells nice, it definitely smells nice. It's just, again, not what I was expecting. And it's very, very uh, different for me, I really like citrus, like really light, fresh, kind of grassy tea scents. And this is much more like floral and, and powdery is, is definitely something I try to kind of stay away from only because it 
powdery scents like kind of bother my throat. I feel like it kind of gets caught, like I breathe it in and it kind of gets caught in my throat. So I tend to stay away from powdery fragrances. But this has a little bit of that in there. It's not bothering me yet. I think it's definitely something I need to get used to. So I think I had mentioned in my intro that there was a cologne that I have been wearing, you know, nonstop for I think 15 years, honestly. How old am I? Yeah, I probably got it right when I was around 30. Anyway, it is the Jo Malone Grapefruit Cologne. And the grapefruit cologne is like the one uh, flavor that's missing at Sephora. You can get all of her other um, scents, but you can't get grapefruit. So I don't know why they don't have it at Sephora. I love grapefruit. Grapefruit is my absolute favorite, and you can get it at any of the kind of department stores like Nordstrom, uh, Neiman's, or whatever. Um, so you can get grapefruit there. I just don't know why Sephora doesn't carry it. But I love this grapefruit. It's just, it's so fresh. It's not terribly sweet. It's just so clean smelling. I'm really obsessed with perfumes that are clean smelling. I don't know if it's from living in New York City where you're just, I don't know, I was just sort of preoccupied and terrified with the fact of having like BO or smelling bad because you're in such close proximity with everyone and when you do smell someone bad you're like oh my god do I smell that way after a long day? So I don't know, I've always had it in my mind, I'm like I just want to smell clean. I just want to smell clean, I just want to smell fresh. You know, I don't want to have too much of like an odor on me. It's also awful like taking the subway with someone who has a very strong, heavy scent on and being like in very close proximity with them and you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna suffocate. So I've always been really, really attracted to light and clean fragrances and I think that's why. But yeah, so the Jo Malone Grapefruit, definitely one of my favorites. I also love her um, English Pear and Freesia scent. I like this more as a home scent. I do have this as a perfume because around the holiday season, yeah, for some reason this scent, um, I don't know, even though it's pretty light, it's kind of fruity, I just think it's great for the holidays. You know, if you don't want to uh, smell like either cinnamon or, I don't know, apple cider. I don't even know what people associate with the holiday. Maybe um, pine trees or whatever. I like, I like a pine tree candle every once in a while, but I think this is a nice break. So the English Pear Freesia Cologne, um, I'll wear around the holidays, and I did have a candle of this. Sorry, I'm looking around. No, I think I finished it. But I do like this more as a home scent, and I like it around the holiday season for some reason. Uh, but I do like this one as well. So those are my two favorite Jo Malone scents. Um, I like plenty other ones, but those two are the ones that I keep gravitating towards. I also so a scent that I just picked up that I absolutely love is the um, Francis Kirkjian. I think I'm completely slaughtering his last name. Um, but Francis Kirkjian is the Aqua Universalis. This is like the ultimate clean, fresh scent ever. There's just like a little bit of citrus, but it really just sort of like evokes like water and um, and freshness and lightness. I really can't describe the scent. His scents are so complex. They're so, so beautiful. I have this in a body lotion. I have a travel size. Oh my God, I love it. It kind of, it kind of starts out sweet, but once it gets onto your skin, it, it smells, it tastes, it smells a little bit more um, fresh and clean. So this has been one of my absolute favorites lately, the Aqua Universalis. Um, and then when I purchased this bottle, Neiman Marcus was having kind of like a deal. You could pick out a free travel size of something. So I got the Petit Matin. This one I find to be a little bit more uh, fruity than the Aqua Universalis. So I really like this for the summertime. It's, it's beautiful. Again, it's very, very difficult to describe his fragrances because they are so complex. I feel like they change pretty quickly on your skin, but not in a bad way. But it's like you can really, really smell all those different notes, and I feel like depending on your mood, where you are, anything else you may have on your body, you're gonna smell like a different aspect of his perfumes. They're just amazing. I actually need to use this one a little bit more. But those are the two that I love from um, Francis Kirchen. Another scent that I love, and this has definitely been in one of my favorites, is the Byredo Pulp. This is their one that literally just smells like orange pulp, and to me it really smells like a cocktail. Yeah, you can really smell the orange in it. It's very, very fruity. It's definitely a, a sweet scent. It's probably sweeter than any of these other scents that I've already mentioned. So yeah, so after the sweetness kind of dissipates, you're left with something a little bit, like a touch bitter, and I think that's why this reminds me of a cocktail. You know, you can mask a cocktail with all of those different like fruity juices, but then like when you get down to it, you have that alcohol in there. Um, I just mentioned this in my totally random makeup haul, but this is the Guerlain Herba Fresca. This is another one that kind of reminds me of a cocktail. 
I just think this smells so wonderful. It's so light, it's so fresh, it's so summery. And most of my fragrances, I don't feel like I wear one season or another. I mean, maybe that English Parafrisia Jo Malone one I liked for the holidays. But I think just most of the fragrances that I like are probably a little bit more typically suited for warmer months, you know, spring and summer, because they are so light and clean and fresh, slightly fruity. Uh, this one is no exception, but this one is um, extremely <laughs> light and fresh and clean. And this one I feel like I probably won't wear much in the wintertime. This is definitely a summertime fragrance for me. This is a little bit sweeter in a different way than the pulp. The pulp is like fruit sweet. This is a little bit more of like a floral kind of sweet. There's a little bit of freshness in there as well. I think the description that Guerlain gives, this particular perfume is like a walk in the grass. So there's a little bit of like a green. You know, I see green when I smell this particular fragrance. I've been loving this and kind of spraying this all over. And then I have two of the Tom Ford body sprays. This I got last year and um, I just, didn't really kind of wear them over the cooler months. So these, I guess in my head, are um, a little bit more suited for the summertime, probably because they're body spray, you know, and I have more likely to have a dress or shorts on or something. Um, but the Mandarino di Amalfi is um, kind of a little bit more citrusy and the Neroli Portofino is just a really nice, uh, light, slightly musky scent. So this is definitely a departure for me. It's a little um, sexier. You know, I don't have a lot of like sexy perfumes. Again, my perfumes are very like, I'm clean, I am not a dirty person. That's like my main focus when it comes to scents. So the Neroli Portofino is definitely a little bit different for me. The Mandarino di Amalfi is uh, very nice. Yeah, this one has a little bit more of a citrus, like lighter scent to it. And um, I think when I talked about these last year when I got them, people were asking me if I found that it didn't stay on my body that long. I don't have that problem with the Tom Ford, at least these body sprays. And I don't spray that much on my body. I just, you know, like a nice kind of like layer all over. And it stays. I feel like I can smell, especially this one, I can smell at the end of the day without a problem. I don't feel like I need to reapply. I mean, I don't feel like I'm wafting in it. I feel like if you come up close to my skin, you can definitely still smell it. I know some people have that issue with Tom Ford fragrances that they don't stay on their uh, skin. But I only have these two body sprays. And then I have this um, Soleil Blanc uh, Shimmering Body Oil. And as much as I like the body oil, and I like the shimmering aspect of it, and I like Soleil Blanc, but when I put the Soleil Blanc fragrance on, I have that weird, because I think it's kind of powdery, I, I have that weird like kind of throat reaction uh, to it. So if I do use this, I just use a little bit on my legs. I can't use it up here because it kind of bothers me. So I've had this bottle for a while because I only use a very little bit when I do use it. And again, only in the summertime because you want to see this. So this is another one that I feel like stays on my skin. I can definitely smell this at the end of the day if I put it on my legs. I feel like if I had it on and then I get into bed without um, showering, I'll, I can even smell it like on my uh, sheets and stuff. So it must be the oil that's in here. But that's the Tom Ford Soleil Blanc. And speaking of uh, dry body oils, I purchased uh, the replica Beach Walk in the dry body oil because I do like this scent. It's very similar to the Soleil Blanc in my head, um, but it's not quite as powdery. So. I purchased this a while ago and I've been waiting for the warmer months to use it and I'm actually reminding myself that I should kind of take this out and use it. But this is definitely a great summertime um, scent, but I would definitely use this in the winter also. I do like this scent and I definitely need to start using this dry, dry body oil a little bit more. And then last but not least, I love this scent. This is the Glossier U scent. And again, this is kind of a departure from what I have shown you because it is not fruity at all. It's definitely a little bit on the muskier side. I don't know what it is. I think it reminds me of something and I just can't figure out what it is. But I feel like even though there's a little bit of heaviness to this scent because of the musk, it smells a little bit peppery even, there's still a lightness to it. I think it's just a great scent for those who don't want something that's too fruity or too sweet. I just think this is really nice. I like this one. I don't think this one is terribly long lasting if I remember correctly. If I spray it on in the morning, I feel like I need to uh, reapply maybe by dinner time. Like if I'm gonna go out for dinner, I'll feel like maybe it's faded by then. But yeah, this is really nice, but this is definitely the most different um, from my collection. And then I feel like I should mention this because I got a sample of this, but I know I'm gonna go back and get a full bottle. This is um, a Guerlain fragrance. It's part of their Aqua Allegoria 
line, which the Herba Fresca is part of, but this one is called Pompaloon. So there's definitely a, a grapefruit in there. Uh, and they describe it as, at dawn, shutters spring open, the sun rises and grows warm, view of a citrus orchard. So it is definitely um, citrusy, it's definitely very citrusy, there's a sweetness there. It's a little bit sharper than the Herba Fresca, which I think is um, like a very kind of like warm, kind of like softer fragrance. This one definitely is, like they say, it's like the sun rises, it's, it is like more of like a like a morning kind of scent, I guess. Almost like the Kirchen uh, Petit Matin. Yeah, there's like a similar quality to them. They smell different, but there's like a similar like quality to them, or I would think of them in the same way. So anyway, I got a sample of this when I purchased the Herba Fresca, and yeah, I think I'll be going back and getting this. Well, I hope you liked this um, perfume collection video. I will definitely be getting back to you on this meteorites. I just feel like I feel like I need to put it on when I don't have any sort of other fragrance going on, no sort of fragrance body lotion, nothing. And I want to see if it sort of changes and shifts and if I smell more of the violet as the day goes on or less or if it really shifts into something I don't like. I'm super curious. So I'm definitely going to be playing around with that and I will report back on the Meteorites uh, perfume. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely comment down below if there are any fragrances that you think I should try. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video.